In today's episode, we're going to need a pencil and eraser, knife, glue, straight edges, graph paper, and a 4x8 sheet of styrene. Welcome to another episode from Mr. RC Fanatic. Today marks the beginning of a whole new series, guys. We're calling this How to Work with Styrene. This is not exactly going to be an in-depth view at what exactly I'm building, but it should provide you with enough uh, helpful hints and tips to be able to allow you to build whatever the heck it is you want. RC Culture has recently asked me to build the body for Project Expedition, which is a pretty awesome vehicle that you've got to check out. There's only a few videos about it so far, but the plans he's got for it are mind-blowingly cool. So do pop over to RC Culture on YouTube and check out what he's got going on. The type of vehicle we're building will be explained in due course, but for now, let's just get started with this build and see if you can guess what it is. When you've got a piece like this, but you need to make more of it, one of the tricks I've found that works really well is you get a piece of plastic, cut it around the right size, and then you can just trace right around it like a template. Another thing I found helpful are these uh, these little magnets, these little neodymium magnets. You can get uh, I got these at Princess Auto here in Canada, but uh, you can typically find them at uh, some kind of hardware stores, that kind of stuff. I find them really good for just holding the plastic on there for the most part, and then you just take your uh, your exacto knife and you can just trace around the, uh, the perimeter. Make sure it's all square. You're not trying to cut all the way through, you're just trying to score the surface. Preferably, you want to keep the knife on the plastic at all times. You don't really want to go lifting it up, because then it may be hard to find where you left off. And I don't know if you can see in the light there, we've got this nice little score line all the way across. Pretty thin stuff, it's about one millimeter thick. And I find that with one little score like that, you can then just come along and begin to snap it out. Sometimes with thicker styrene, this, this is some 0 .080 here, so twice the thickness, uh, I'd have to make multiple scores to get it started anyways. And uh, to go around a corner like that, you'd have to cut in multiple times and shake it off bit by bit. Sort of like uh, stained glass work, actually, where you have to snap bits off to get those corners you want. Whereas with this thin stuff, it works really well. Sometimes you'll make a goof, like this piece here. When I uh, scored along the top and snapped it, took out a chunk right in this area here where it wasn't supposed to, so it's not perfectly level. Now, don't think this is garbage. Don't think little things like this are garbage. Keep all this styrene. You will find uses for it. So what we're gonna do right now though is using this piece we're gonna add some detail to the sides of the bed. Whereas it would normally just be a junk piece at this point, I can actually add it on top of the side to start uh, adding the detail of the ins and the outs of the way that the uh, panels were stamped. So I've got my drawing got all my lines and my dimensions on here so I can just lay this directly on top and you can see that it's the right size so I just got a pencil I'm just gonna hold it on one side line it up on the top make a little mark where I want to cut it I'll do the same thing on this side I'll just grab a nice straight edge, I kinda like these clear ones just make it a little bit easier to see what you're doing so now again we're just gonna just take the knife Or across. Snap it off like that. And when you add that on, you can see that it's now starting to add some detail to the bedside. Sometimes you'll have an area like right up in here, but you're gonna have a corner you wanna cut off. But it's really hard to get your fingers in there and grab it off. So I just like to keep some pliers on hand. 
because they work really well to just grab that corner and pull it off. There will come times when you're building when sometimes you'll have realized that you've done something wrong and have to go back and fix it. And that's, that's normal, guys. But in this kind of situation, I'm going to have two of these stacked on top of two of these. However, that means that right in the wheel well, it is four layers thick. And what we got going on eventually here is that RC Culture wants to put fender flares on this. They're designed to fit over two millimeters, not four. So basically, uh, what we have to do is just come into the back here and on these two pieces here, we need to widen the wheel opening. Now, the flare eats into the plastic by eight millimeters. So whereas the ones on the front are fine, the ones on the back have to be eight millimeters shorter. So here's an easy way of doing that. Take a compass, take a ruler, and you open it up to eight millimeters in this case. Then what you can do is you can just simply drag it along the surface, just like so. Now you can cut on that line. Now this will be free-handed. So you want to just sort of take it slow and carefully. Now when I put one of these on, it retains the original size. When you come to the back, you can see this one's larger. One of the tests that you can do to see how precise your cut is, is by pushing it down onto a flat surface like this, and taking a piece of paper, and trying to see if you can shove it underneath it, which doesn't seem to be able to go. So then the other test is, put it like that, and pull on the paper. You can see how it's moving the plastic. So the thickness of, pla of paper is still too thick. That's exactly what you want. You want something nice and straight. To get a nice straight cut, just use a straight edge and lightly, just lightly, cut through. You don't want to press too hard because sometimes the blade can dig in and even if you're pushing down hard on the straight edge to not make it uh, not allowed to move, if it's if you're pushing too hard with a knife, it, it can. It can still it can still move and you'll end up with a wobbly line and that's no good. Now this step's kind of optional uh, and it's a little messy as you can probably see here. But what I like to do is once I've got the pieces all cut out, I take the knife blade and I just clean all the edges up. What you can have happen is when you glue, go to glue them together um, if you have a little bit of a raised lip to where you've cut, you can maybe even hear that there, it, it doesn't allow the, the pieces of plastic to sit really nice and flush together. So I just take the, the, the razor and instead of holding it 90 degrees to the part, you want to tilt it, but you tilt it in the direction that you're going to pull or push. So if you're going to pull towards you, you tilt it, you tilt it that way. If you're going to push away from you, you tilt it that way. So then you just come in here you just do that and you can see little bits sort of coming off. And when you're done that, you got a nice smooth edge. Can't hear as much now. So that just sort of cleans things up nicely, makes them look a bit more professional, makes them fit better. It's a good thing to do, frankly. working on the tailgate here and the way that it's designed there is a uh, light for the rear license plate right here. I've already got one of these so what we're doing is we're making a hole in the tailgate so that this can actually sit in there. Now what I use is one of these micro drills and then this is a little container that uh, holds all the drill bits. The way that you work is uh, you slide it over to the one that you want and tip out the bit that you want and then just got this uh, very small 
chuck or collet, whatever you want to call it, in the end of the drill. You put the, uh, the bit in just like that and you just hold it in there and you start drilling. So I've already gone through this one. What we're going to do now is that's the largest drill bit I have in this set and it is very small. It's a number 62. Um, but I actually need this hole a little bit larger so I've also got my normal drill bit set. So I'm going to grab the smallest one in here as a step up. Still not quite large enough for the back of the, uh, the light that we're trying to install, but you always want to sort of step up one little bit at a time. What I sometimes find is that uh, since these, these collets are designed for the drill bits that the set comes with, these other uh, bits are just, they're, they're a little bit large, they don't fit too nicely. So uh, sometimes it's helpful to sort of take it apart like that and shove the bit through from the back of the collet just to make sure that it, it seats in nicely. And you go like that. And there we go, and we're through. Now you got a 1 16th inch in a hole there. Oh, it's starting to, starting to go in there. Sometimes I also find that if you work it back and forward like this, it uh, also removes some material. A little bit more controlled sometimes as well. There you go. When you finish drilling that hole, you'll see there's a little bit of a uh, flash left on the side there. And you can do a couple things here. You can take a larger drill bit and uh, put it on there and just spin it with your hands and it'll remove that. Or you can take your, uh, your knife blade. Uh, this one's been snapped a couple times. It's not quite as pointy as it used to be, but you can just stick it in there and uh, run it around as well. Since this is part of a hinge, we need to make a hole through it. And uh, for that we'll need to use our micro drill. But uh, to get the hole started where I want it, I find using a compass is kind of helpful. Uh, this one here has a particularly nice pointy end to it. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just sort of stick it on the plastic where we want the hole. Make sure it's exactly where we want it, then push down. And that leaves a nice little dimple in there.
got a bed. It's a very nice bed. I like it. I think it'll look great with the cab that we're going to be building. But what exactly do you think this is for? Let's leave comments down below and see if you can guess it first. <laughs>